In history, the relationship between the green and the trees and the city has started by a very strong separation from the historical city center without any green and the nature outside. And then we have the trees and the parks entering the city. And now it's becoming more and more an, an amalgamation, where it's, it's kind of becoming one. Normally, you have to keep a distance between a building and a tree. Normally, you have just a building. And our buildings, they also act as a tree. Well, the idea of the plane cube, but what you see here now, actually is a child. It's not, you know, it's, it's hard to say that the building is finished because right now what you see is still the first stage of the building. And some of this, like the pots and parts of the steel structure will go and then this building will mature and it will become a huge design tree actually. And the idea is that we can build a huge structure with small trees. Which is only three or four years old and it's, it's very strong. It's like welded. Yeah, normally you cannot weld wood. You can weld steel, but not wood. And by using the, the wood as a living organism, we can do it. Yeah. But we have to stick to all the growth rules of trees. Otherwise, everything will die. One technique we have is the inosculation, the joining of trees. So this was two, one here, one here. And when we connect them, they merge to one. In the second year of merging, they create one growth ring, and then it is one body of wood, and it is one organism. So in the beginning you have two, and we do this with hundreds. So we are constructing, not with trees, we are constructing the tree itself. What we do is we use the trees in a way architects normally use semi-finished materials like beams or bricks. They put a lot of these things together to create one structure. And we use a lot of young trees to create one big tree structure. And they just come together because you've... Yeah. What do you do to make them come no, together? No, we, we don't talk to them. <laughs> in this case, we use little screws. It stays in the tree. It does not really harm it. And it simply presses together the two parts. And then emerge the bark and then the wood. And then is one. And then they exchange everything. Here you can see an older element where the trees have, the trunks have already grown together actually. Actually here we, we can't see the screws anymore, they are overgrown. Formerly those were four young plane trees, one, two, three, four, and they have been grown together here. How long did that take? Three to f three, four years, four yes. years. Here that's what we wrote, that it might look like this in 18 years. So this is when the trees have overgrown the technical elements. When the trees, when it is all grown together to one tree, the load of this construction will be taken by the trunks of the tree. So the tree will become the, the columns of the construction. So the idea is that this could be a structure that becomes a building or becomes part of a building. Hypothetically, yes, we could have facades inside. So instead of this walkways, you could have also balconies and inside here you could have a flat. It will not be the only alternative to traditional architecture, but it's an element that will be added more and more to architecture. It's more three-dimensional than a green wall. I think humans see trees differently. Maybe you can say they have more respect to trees or they are more impressed by trees. Wow. It's autumn. <laughs> the leaves are falling. <laughs> nice. Trees, of course, they have these branches and so it, it has a three-dimensionality that these green walls, green facades don't have. They can never have. Uh, they, they can grow a very deep facade. So if you are inside the tree, you don't have this green wall in front of you, but you have this perspective through the branches and the leaves. So it's very different. You have the same shade, maybe even better shade, but you have a, a depth of the facade. Here you can, can see the, the parts and the, how, the, how, the, how it works actually. So oh, great, here's the, yeah. this is the technical infrastructure. It's not much, yeah. but it's, uh, it's for watering the plants. So is it's it? an um, automatic watering system. This is just for, um, for the winter. I think we leave it on in summer also because okay. so then the sun is, doesn't dry out yeah. the pot so quickly. And there, there are quite some interesting aspects 
of this instant uh, park. A park like this, like from the first day, it has a similar canopy as a fully grown tree. So you don't have to wait. So if you build a square in the city and you want shade and the volume of a tree right away, you could use this uh, structure. You see it's always one, two, three, four. Because we wanted a certain volume from the beginning and also because we don't know if all the plants will survive the process. Because it's, it hasn't been done before, so we have these pots in, in up to 8 meters height in the Black Forest where it's very, very cold in the winter, very stormy weather and in the summer it can get quite hot. So of course we, we wanted to make sure that, that we have enough plants and of course it's always a question of how young are the plants and how long are the plants. So in this case we chose quite young plants to be able to form them also around these details so they can intergrow, they can overgrow the technical elements. We don't have an English expression for when the tree grows around a pipe or something. This is a starting and this is after something like two years and this is after five years. What do you call that in German? Uh, Überwallung. Überwallung is like growing over. Yeah. So that's what, ha what is happening here. That's what we try to provoke with the detailing and with the construction. And this is um, the very first building, the Barbotanic Footbridge, and you can really see here what we want to achieve, that we want to bring people into the canopy. We call it Baubotanik, it's a German term. And a Bau is building and Botanik is botany, so it's the combination of uh, botany and architecture mainly. And we really try to fuse buildings and trees, basically. I started very long time ago. I was studying architecture in Stuttgart and I stumbled over some historical examples. In Germany we have a long tradition of so-called Tanzlinden, which means a dancing tree. It's a special kind of lime tree which is pruned and formed in a way that you can add a platform in the canopy. And in medieval times it was very famous. It was the only tree in town and people gathered there and came up for the spring dance and so on. So it was a very famous thing. And another historical reference is the so-called living root bridges of the Kazi people in India. They do fantastic structures out of the roots of ficus trees and they bend them over the rivers and over time a really walkable bridge appears. It's a fascinating thing and almost half of my study I was focusing on this with the aim to transfer this historical approaches into modern architecture. This is the town of Ludwigsburg, it's close to Stuttgart. This is more or less the main square and it's completely uh, paved. It's very hot in the summer. This was for decades the reality of urban planning. And now we really completely try to change. This project here, the green living room, the idea is to use our Baubotanic approach in combination with these green walls to create a kind of urban comfort climate zone. So you have fresh air, you have shade, you have the coolness of the evaporation and all these things. The microclimatic effects are very much brought by the canopy of the trees, which is very massive because it's only three years old. Yeah, so normally a tree would be much smaller. Um, and plus the wall, which is having birds and bees and so on. And it is all standing on a parking. So in fact it's a green roof. So there's almost no soil. We used the plant addition technique to create this big canopy roof, which is not possible with a normal tree. Here you can see very well this joining, the inosculation. Yeah? So this is one and these are even two and they are joined to one point here. Right? And again here, and again here, and here. And this is a very interesting point. 
because we have this tree coming from the, the ground and we have another level that is coming from here, from the wall. And we join them and there's even a third level on top. And the idea is that we can build a huge structure with small trees. It is much more efficient to generate a framework than a solid trunk. I think it was 80 trees. They all fused together to one. Even if it is young, it's still strong because of the framework. Yeah. It will just take one or two years more. This is all one. And then they get all the water and everything they need from the lowermost ones. And the other roots are not necessary at all. So we could remove even the wall if we want. It's all based on scientific approaches, so it's all proved. I am trained as an architect. I officially, I am a just an architect, but about 70% of my PhD was botany, about the joining techniques. Okay, so here we have two connections, one here, one here, of two trees. You can see uh, the rest of the screw here. Yeah. It stays in the tree. After some years, we cut the base of the second tree here. And what the tree is doing, it is just adapting. When this is cut away, it gets all the water and nutrition from here, while this is going stronger. But this still survives and gets the water by this connection. Yeah. And this is three coming here, is joined to one and three again. Yeah. And then we will cut here, because this is coming from the, the, the wall, this is coming from the ground. In the, in the future we will, we will cut, maybe next year. We will cut here uh, yeah. and then it is getting all, all the water from down here. This is a very nice. Is this something that happens in nature anyways? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So it is uh, something very natural, for example, in roots. When the roots are growing in the soil, they sometimes meet each other and they grow over each other and then they merge like this. So even very many trees of the same species in a forest are interconnected in a kind of network. They even communicate by this network. What we just do, we use it for designing and constructing with trees. What we see here that really is not only the bark, that is all the wood that is joined. Yeah, we peeled off the bark here. So you can see how, how the, fundamental it is. Yes, yeah. it, is, it is not uh, only on the surface. Yeah. <laughs> this requires so much patience. Yeah. You have to wait some time. Yeah. It is no. not so slow. No, something like this, how long did this take? Maybe four years is the yeah. time, but yeah. I started early enough. <laughs> you can grow older these things. So the, the trees are doing a lot regarding microclimate, shade and so on. And the wall also gives the biodiversity and has other aspects like, for example, is a sound barrier. Normally trees are seen as a kind of, but in fact they are not. And here we really try to combine these aspects that we have the canopy and we have the sound barrier wall. It's only 50 centimeter and it's all in one. Here we can see, this is just the wall, right? Mm -hmm. And on both sides we have the tree structure, so all together is like this. And it's a living wall, a sound barrier and a tree in one. This is giving a lot of benefits to a building, for example, protecting against heat and so on. Mm -hmm. This is based off on a kind of a Lego system. Um, it's, it's blocks like this, yeah? And we, they are pre-cultivated. And they have all numbers, with, they are all the trees and the plants are in, and we just... Took, 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 took. So it was built in two days, basically. So we have this here, for example. Here you can see, and then again here. Yeah, you can see here's the watering system, for example. So we have the, the pipes here, and they run all along the wall, uh -huh. and they are dripping time by time, and that's it. And so this is completely different from a green wall because... This is a living wall, right? It's a new system we developed for the northern and eastern European market where it is very cold and dry in winter and many of other green wall systems fail because they, there's not enough soil. So this is very massive in a way. But this is completely different because it is self-sustaining and self-supporting. So it can stand in front of a building and it can even carry parts of the building. This is designed as a load-bearing structure. It will carry all the loads in the future. 
This can work with smaller projects, for sure not with, with the skyscraper. Yeah. Normally you have to keep a distance between a building and a tree. And since we form the tree and make a tree more comparable with the engineered structure, it's more stiff and thus we can really fuse the building and the tree on the same side. So do you think that this can be something scalable? It's absolutely scalable. You can use it really for buildings as high as a tree can grow, so 30 meters. And we, we made some design proposals for even for whole streets where all the street trees are fused with the building in this way. So the people don't live in a house, they live in a tree. Behind there are some rooms for sure that are traditional in a way, but they really, if you go out of the door, you stand in the tree, in the canopy. We have quite a bit of steel in this uh, project and it will become less steel and it will become more and more tree. We think that in a few years these trees will be intergrown and when they become one organism we can take out the pots and then we, ha we have to cut the trees like the connection to the pots then we can take out the pots. The pots are just there to create this instant huge green volume and to be able to form them. Okay. So we have actually a design tree or a tree house, whatever you want to call it. It's also a kind of speculation, but the tree will form the space inside this building in the future. We are not building the roof. We, will, we think that the tree will do this. Oh, it's <laughs> coming we don't want to really replace technical material in total. So it's not a kind of naive, romantic idea of coming back to nature and ignoring technical development. Definitely not. It's really adding something that is technically developed, but is a part of nature to our technical world. kind of a low-tech shading element because you, you don't need shade in the winter so we don't have leaves in the winter and you need shade in the summer that's when the leaves are there and you have a natural way of, of shading a building so we are discussing it also with these high-tech climate engineers for buildings they are also interested in this low-tech approach to say, okay, how can we use the tree to do this and so we don't need these very expensive technical elements If we do it well, we can build a house that is in, at the same time a tree. We have to rethink the relationship between the city and, and the landscape surrounding the city because we have this idea of densifying the city and not building uh, around because we don't want to destroy the nature. And on the other hand, we have not enough uh, apartments, we, no, we have not enough space for housing, so they become very expensive. Up to now we, we always think that we are not supposed to build anywhere because it's destroying nature or it's destroying the landscape. If you are designing buildings in a way that they become even a benefit, they can even make the, the, the landscape that has formerly maybe been an agricultural land, make it even better in terms of ecology. So we, then we have to rethink this relationship. That can be one idea of creating ecology plus houses. So, tree houses, house trees. <laughs> we have quite a bit of steel in this uh, project and it will become less steel and it will become more and more tree. So then these columns might be taken out. So what we did is we chose a way of construction. If you look closely you can see that there are many screws but they are constructed in a way so we could take out the screws and take out the columns and still leave some of the other metal structure inside, which is then intergrown with the tree. So you mm -hmm. can see a timeline. You can still see the pots. Uh -huh. You can already see some pots have been taken out because the trees have already intergrown. And here you can see how the tree is becoming more like one organism. And we have already taken out some steel elements and the columns. After 18 years? 
could be could be 18 could, could be okay. 25 okay <laughs> and so the proportion of the building in general including the tree is changing and for many architects they cannot deal with it <laughs> because they are very much afraid by the natural processes so you have to really learn to think in time buildings by architects they are normally designed as a kind of a piece of art that is finished and we cannot do it like this we have to deal with all these processes of development and we have to take advantage of this because it's very interesting so what we do we always draw timelines and not completely fixed timelines we just open up possibilities how it could develop it will stay interesting for, for the rest of our lives and the rest of the lives of the projects. And we guess or we think that the projects will become much older than they will outlive us, we are pretty sure, if they are taken care of. Yeah. But most of the trees, I mean these trees, they can reach ages of several hundred years, so we are pretty sure that they will outlive us. Yeah.